You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales in the beautiful by Nature Tips and Papers Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. I'm Iberli Abru, and thanks for watching Sun TV News Alert. At a time when beaches, resort, and spa is the subject of much controversy in the Turks and Caicos Islands, its parent company Sandals is being heaped with praise in the eastern Caribbean island of Grenada. Beaches owner Gordon Butch Stewart, who opened the Key West Village in Providenciales, Turks and Caicos Islands a few weeks ago, is expected to open Sandals La Source Grenada Resort and Spa in December 2013. The resort into which Sandals is investing $19 million will have nine dining options, including the brand's first steakhouse, to be named Butch Chop House after the resort's company founder and chairman. Other dining options will include a sushi bar, a French cafe, Caribbean, French, and Italian restaurants. The resort will have 231 rooms, an addition of 131 to the 100 rooms Sandals inherited when it acquired the resort in November. Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, members of the private sector and residents of the island are excited about Butch Stewart coming to the country, the number of local jobs it will create and other benefits the country with a population of 104,000 will reap. In this report from Grenada, we hear more about Butch Stewart's expansion in that country. Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, has welcomed the commencement of construction on a Sandals multi-million dollar room expansion in the Spice Isle. The newly elected Grenadian Prime Minister's declaration comes after Sandals acquired the former La Source Resort last year. According to the Grenadian leader, the project has brought significant employment to his country's ailing economy. Some 200 people are currently employed by the Sandals La Source expansion and is expected to increase 400 employees as the new project evolves. When completed, the new Sandals La Source is expected to employ over 400 people. Wherever the Sandal chains existed or exist, we have seen serious exposure of that particular country. And um, it is, it is, his properties have been well marketed and have been providing upward mobility and economic front for, for the countries involved. So we don't see why it would be different in Grenada. Particularly, we believe we have a better product <laughs> than most countries do have. <laughs> and, and therefore, we feel that um, we can only benefit uh, in a very serious way from, from the advent of, of sandals. And I think the job potential from this activity would be, would be extremely high. And, um, the number of restaurants that are going to be involved, the variety and the diversity of the product, uh, I, I think it's going to be um, a, a great positive for the country. The newly elected Prime Minister says that his understanding is that the resort will be of the highest quality and will heighten Grenada's tourism product. The island's tourism minister, Honorable Alexander Otway Noll, has expressed great anticipation for the level of airlift sandals will attract to Grenada. She believes the Sandals investment will be a great benefit to the rest of the hotel sector in the Spice Isle. Over the years we've been fighting up for airlines and, you know, it's a small destination. We have 100,000 people and, you know, 1,800 hotel rooms on a good day. And so, you know, airlift has been difficult. Thankfully, we had the university here, which has 5,000 students and the movement of people. They have, they have really been the ones filling, filling the airlines. But now with the addition of sandals, we know wherever there's a sandals, the airplanes fly. But the government of Grenada is not the only ones welcoming the multi-million dollar investment. The country's struggling construction industry is also upbeat about the sandals investment there. Right now, construction is at the long low. And with sandals here, I mean, it boosts the, the, the economy and the guys are feeling happy. I mean, you could take home a paycheck every fortnight now, you know. So everybody's excited and happy for sandals here. 
The Sandals expansion will increase the existing Lesource Resort from 100 to 231 rooms and is expected to open in December of this year, just months after the much heralded opening of the $95 million Key West Village expansion at Beaches Turks in Caicos. On Wednesday, June 5th, an anti discrimination workshop was held for healthcare providers at the DCR headquarters in the Bight. Hesburn Henry, who was one of the organizers, said they chose to focus on healthcare providers because they are the first point where HIV persons will be diagnosed. He explains in this report. The workshop we are currently having is focused on anti discrimination specifically for healthcare providers. What we, we've choos, chosen to focus on healthcare providers for this workshop because they are the first, the first point where HIV persons would be diagnosed. And so if those persons have the proper information for those clients, they will be able to better do their job and not discriminate against those persons. And the healthcare providers, once they get the necessary information, it makes it easier for persons who are HIV positive because it won't block them from getting any kind of medical care that they can possibly get. Um, coming up, we have, we'll be launching our discrimination campaign, anti-discrimination campaign, which will include posters, pamphlets, and also video commercials. It's all part of a year-long promotion, which is under the Getting to Zero campaign, which is a worldly campaign at the moment. And every year, it's a different um, focus according to World AIDS Day. But ours will be focusing specifically on getting to zero discrimination, which will focus around the campaign. And that is also part of what our discrimination campaign workshop is focusing on also. This is Sun TV, real news as it happens. We'll be right back. With Digicel 4G, discover thousands of apps available for download from the Google Play Store, allowing you to do more, change more, listen more, feel more, chat more, play more, see more, like more. Share more. Make more of every moment. Have more fun with Digicel 4G. Explore the Google Play Store from your Samsung smartphone and put extraordinary at your fingertips. Be extraordinary. Digicel. The District of Five Keys will come alive between August 2nd and 3rd this year when the first ever Seafarers Boat Festival is held. Organizers expect thousands of residents and tourists to attend the event which will feature a number of exciting powerboat races, several stores and a whole range of other activities near the popular Boogaloo Scroll. Irene Grant, the secretary of the Seafarers Boat Fest organization, said they want to reignite the passion for the sea, which is part of the Turks and Caicos Islands culture. I am the secretary for a newly formed organization uh, by the name of Seafarers Boat Fest Organization. Um, the organization is about launching a boat fest this August 2nd and 3rd in the Five Keys area near the Boogaloo's Crawl in Five Keys. And the whole vision of the, of the Seafarers Boat Fest is to reignite and reunite the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands with our heritage. We had a relationship with the sea from way back when. This was the way of life for our people. It was food, it was employment. And we want to reignite and get that passion going again for the love of the sea. And we're doing it by way of a cultural heritage boat fest. Now there will be boat races. We will have uh, the powerboat race. We will have kayaking. We will have sailboat race. And we also have the Kamalabi boat races. And most of these, the sailboats at least, will be those that are built locally, the sloops local, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you like the adrenaline rush, you mustn't miss the powerboat races. Um, the president for the organization is Mr. Um, Herbert Swan Jr. 
and the vice president is the attorney, Mr. Gordon Kerr, and we have other members on that serve on that committee, Ms. Ethelyn Gibbs. We have um, uh, Mr. Ken Abrams, he's the treasurer, myself and Ms. Lord Leo Decia Delancey, we are the secretaries for the organization, and we're looking forward to a fantastic event. You want to be a part of what's happening culturally in Providenciales, Turks and Caicos, come August 2nd and 3rd. The Friday night, which is the 2nd of August, will be a meet and greet with all the boat entrants, persons that will be participating. We're looking forward to doing a, a, a um, Calcutta. People can come and bid on different races, and it's a meet and greet and just a big block party. And then the races begin on Saturday. We have the director of the cultural department, Mr. David Bowen. He would be there doing a lot of fun activities uh, with the children. We will also have Henry the Conk out there. We're looking at putting up a museum, um, something that will be educational for the schools. And the tourists will come and get vital information about our heritage. So we're looking forward to a grand time. And as many of you can be there, come on down and enjoy the festivities. The Department of Environment and Maritime Affairs, DEMA, would like to caution swimmers to the possible presence of jellyfish in the Grace Bay area and urge visitors in particular to be on the lookout. On Sunday, June 2nd and Monday, June 3rd, three individuals swimming in the Grace Bay near Club Med were reportedly stung by jellyfish. The victims were treated at the Myrtle Rigby Clinic and released. DEMA officers swam the area where the incident took place on Tuesday, June 4th, but were unable to locate any jellyfish. Nevertheless, the department is urging swimmers in the Grace Bay area to swim with caution until further notice. I'm Iberle Abreu, and thanks for watching Sun TV News. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you real news as it happens, directly to your computer or mobile device.